Hey everyone, welcome to another amazing inspirational story that actually tells you why patience and working on your limiting beliefs is paying off. So today we have like a very dear a client of mine who's now with her man, Doris Klingbeil. And by the way, nobody can pronounce it the way I do because it's German. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm really excited to have you, Doris, and to share with us, right? Like, um, you know, how you got on, how got you got on, um, on this path of sort of like the success um, in dating after years of things not working, right? And you're being frustrated. And so, tell us a little bit about, you know, what were some of the biggest challenges and frustrations before you came to me when it came to dating and interacting with men? I think it started with uh, the fact that my father is, is a narcissistic. He actually has a, uh, was diagnosed with being narcissist. And I think that that probably started my limiting belief that I wasn't worthy, you know, to, to meet uh, a guy. Uh, I would often wonder, like, I would never want to marry somebody like my dad. So in my head, I think I kind of, you know, was already aware of that. Mm -hmm. But as the year, I used to be super shy. And then as the years went on, I, I just couldn't meet anybody. I don't know. I, I, I wasn't myself or I had, I would kind of self-sabotage it before it even started. Um, I think I had this walls were so big that a sledgehammer probably couldn't even take it down. Uh, I think men were probably very interested, but I never noticed that they were interested because I was just so into my myself. And then as the years went on, I mean, I've traveled tons. I got more social. And then I think um, it still wasn't happening. Yeah. Right. Like, I, in, and now I'm older and now you're meeting you know, and I would get ghosted so many times or I wouldn't even get me people to call me back. And I just couldn't figure out what was going on. Totally. Oh, my God. So I can totally relate to that. Uh, what, and why was that so frustrating to you, Doris? And how did that make you feel? Well, it, it, I think it was frustrating because I work with a lot of men. Um, I was in, you know, the medical field and uh, I work with men. I work with firefighters, police. And you, I had such a good relationship with them. I could tease them with them and flirt with them. But as soon as it was somebody that I was interested in, it seemed like I kind of almost uh, clamped up. And then I think I showed, um, I think I wasn't showing who I really was to, to many people. I think that, you know, I was like a chameleon. I would kind of change wherever I was, but I was a true Doris was always still very, you know, firm. So I think when people first met me, they probably thought, oh, she's uh, a bit stuffy or aloof. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I mean? Like, I think that I was misinterpreted, but I don't, I don't think I really realized how I was showing myself. Yeah, yeah, totally. Right. Because we have all those unconscious ways of how we come off and we have no idea. Right. The appearance. So now tell us, Doris, what is your romantic life now? Oh, it's been it was such a surprise. Um, I had uh, an age range and this fellow was outside of my age range. So to tell you the truth, I probably would never have met him if he wouldn't have uh, sought me out. And uh, he's a bit older. And so I kind of at first thought, oh, what the heck, at this point in time, I have nothing to lose, right? I think what really interested me in, in his profile, he said he volunteered. And I go, well, anyone who can, what would volunteer for Meals on Wheels or any kind of thing, I think they have to have a kind soul, right? I think that that was one, one of the things that um, kind of attracted to me. And then I, you know, I found out he has done a lot of work on himself. So we kind of spoke the same language. Like we knew he knows what an avoidant is and he, you know, he even knows Brene Brown. I was quite impressed that, you know, I know, I know lots of men read Brene Brown, but it, I, that was kind of impressive that he did that. Yeah. And I love the story that what I love about this is right. That it's like, it's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Right. But you have now the right language and the right communication tools and skills and both of you actually have awareness, right? So right. there's sort of like this perspective and this responsibility and ownership that you can take on when you get triggered, right? right. And I think and we, that's we, the difference here. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. We talk all the time, like right from the beginning, I'm quite fit and he is not. And so he was very worried about that. Yeah. And uh, I'm very active. I've traveled tons. Mm -hmm. So he was uh, worried about that. And so his avoidance self, 
he already told me he could have, he would have had his running shoes on already. Mm -hmm. And then he, but he said there was something about me that he felt that connection, that it was worth it. He goes, well, maybe she'll bring out more of the adventurous side of me. So I shouldn't worry too much about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I can, you don't have to exercise together. I can do my own thing. I have been doing it. So I think that was kind of interesting is that we, he would, he's very much a communicator. And so he's the one that said, when he first met me, he said, I thought you were a bit starchy. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and then I said, he goes, but I think you put your persona on because I was a supervisor. So you have this persona. And then I don't know what it is about him, but then all of a sudden I remember you saying, um, let the girl out or you have to be, you know, and I always wanted to have more fun and be more playful. That was one of my goals actually is to be more fun and not to be so serious. I'm quite a serious person. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I can get misinterpreted, but for some reason he is seeing the real doors. Like I, we laugh and we joke. And now like this person's coming out that I just feel totally, you know, I would like to say decline a dog has, has come out to play. Oh, that's so awesome. Which, uh, which actually leads me to the next question. What were some of the specific tools and things that really helped you to get the results that you learned in my program in a time working with me? I think the biggest one was the fact that you uh, would understand what it was like to be raised by a narcissist because your mother uh, was. So I think when you shared that with me and how you have to, um, I'm a people pleaser. And so, of course, I'm, I'm very much attracting narcissists. The last fellow I dated was narcissist to the umph degree. Like he showed his true colors near the end. And I think that I think I was meant to meet him, though, because I, I already knew what I was doing. I could already tell the signs of, OK, this is not going to go, go well. But I almost felt like I had to go through the experience. But it's not till you kind of gave me some tools about how you have to be firm and say, you know, if somebody criticized you, oh, thank you, I, you know, that, I, yep, that's me, and to kind of take ownership of it and not give them the power. I think that was one of the main big things that I learned. I think that was huge because I would always attract narcissistic people or people that were very emotionally unavailable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you also mentioned, and that's like a huge step because, I mean, especially for the women out there who can relate to that, who have a narcissistic parent, have a narcissistic background. This is like such a huge transformation. And I also remember you mentioning to me, uh, can you tell us a little bit more what the impact was of you working with the six feminine archetypes? Yes, I mean, they don't remember them all right now, but I think the biggest one was um, to, to, to be more playful. And, you know, he, he treats me like the, a queen, really, he does. I mean, he I have flowers here that he gave me the second batch that he's given Aww. me. And I think that, and I, I, I was quite funny because the very first thing I said, to him, one of the first things I said to him is that through the surgery, I used the warrior as my motto. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, and I think everybody thought knows I'm a strong person. So mm -hmm. that, that was it. But I, I said to him, I don't want to be a warrior anymore. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that he, that was all he needed to hear. Cause then all of a sudden he became, um, and it's so comforting. I never thought I, I would never want to give up my power of being in control all the time. But when I, as soon as I said that, I, I had tears and everything. And I was shocked that I actually told him that. But that, that was a huge changing point for me too, is that I can be uh, soft and feminine and still be strong and still be the warrior. So that kind of made me think of the archetypes that you had. Like I, right, being the playful, being, you know, kind of in your power, but also giving up a lot of that. That was huge, I think. Mm -hmm. So all of the women out there that were like me, you know, you have to be in control all the time. I think you were the one that actually said that, uh, you know, that uh, you have to kind of be more playful and not always be in control, right? Uh, oh, 100%, right? It's about the balance or the harmony, for those of you who don't believe in balance, uh, creating really harmony within yourself right. versus creating like this disharmony, right? Right. And what are some other things that you learned, uh, particularly in the home study course and some of the modules and in the group coaching calls that, that really were like speaking to you and really, you know, maybe even surprised you, but actually ended up helping you gain, gain a new perspective on things? I think just looking at the different types of the men too, I think that was important to, to see is that you, I think we kind of put men into a box all the time and not realize that they have and you have to play to their different sides as well. I think that was 
was it? I can't. Rec I remember I did. I did all of the home study ones, and I even had made notes and stuff. It's been a while since I've done it, but uh, I uh -huh. think it was more. I gained. Um, there's many parts of a, you, a person. So sometimes you have to be open. And mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that you, that the women have to really realize you have to really be open and you have to learn to change some of the things and it's not overnight. It's a constant thing. Like I started meditating and I read a lot. And one, the one book that I read was untamed. And that really spoke to me is how, especially from a German culture, you put into a cage and I really have lived an untamed life but I never felt that I was worthy until I met a man. And isn't it ironic that as soon as I realized that I lived an awesome, amazing, untamed life, I made a man. Isn't that like amazing? You know what I mean? And that's also like the archetypes, right? It's like this, this like a really this wild woman unleashing the different parts inside of yourself and then also helping him to reconnect to his archetypes because a man also has those six masculine archetypes right that you were alluding to so what, what were some of the biggest concerns or hesitations that you had or maybe you didn't have any uh, working with me or what did you have to overcome I think at first it was more like that oh you can do it you don't need you know you don't need help or I think I was almost at the point where I was just um, I had worked a lot on myself as I told you before and I think that uh I was just kind of going, okay, really was happy with who I was. And I know that seems kind of, uh, um, so when I saw, when I think when I, when I came to you, I was just at that point where, okay, you know, I really like who I was. That narcissist thing was really kind of always bothering me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I go, how are you ever going to get over that? And I, and I think when I, talk to you that's when I realized wow look at like I used you as an example like look at what sh what you all have to do I think it's taking the first step and it's not an overnight thing that's for sure and I think yeah. so many people there's no magic pill that you have to that you can take you really have to do and read and I think the home study is important and you have to be real with yourself you have to be honest mm -hmm. yeah totally right and you don't know what you don't know a fish doesn't know that it's wet so right. not, if you're not open to expanding our consciousness and our awareness and our perspective then yeah how are you going to change right Doris any final advice that you have for women who are on the fence working with me you know and and just kind of like do you have anything like any encouraging words for them um, of wisdom well I would just I would say that um, yeah I think that you know watching the, your the videos watching the um, your um, YouTube things I think that's really important but not to everybody is different I think I learned a lot from just listening like I didn't really participate a lot in the in the courses I was listening more to see what other people had to say and I think that's just more my type mm -hmm. right so that I would be to sit and listen more I think the biggest thing is to have to be really open to be real with yourself and some of the things that you're going to hear you might not like but they'll resonate with you later mm -hmm. like you know write notes And, uh, you know, really pay attention because I think that it eventually comes in a full circle, but you might hear something at first and going, oh man, like, like that's not going to work. What the heck is that? But it, it really does make a difference, right? I think that that's the hardest part is like, for instance, even looking at the archetypes, you don't even look at that as yourself. I think we sometimes get so set into who we are that we're not open to any kind of change at all. Mm, yeah, so true, right? wait a minute, I have, I have, I don't just have the queen and the warrioress, I also have the wild woman. Oh, wait a minute, I also have the priest, right? So it's like interesting to, to, yeah, like all those archetypes that have been dormant for so right. long. And then we wonder why we're attracting men who also have all their dormant pieces inside of themselves and are not emotionally not connected, right? Right. So, no, uh, I have to say that it was, it makes such a difference. I never really thought that uh, it would. So I think that sometimes, If you're let, I'm, my belief is when I'm led to doing something, like when I came to you, then that's a reason, like something is telling me that I should do it. So I have always been the type that will then investigate and, and, and look at more information, mm. right? Like if you're, if somebody's cruising the internet, some ladies out there are cruising the internet and they come up to you, there's probably a reason why they're doing that. And, you know, at least give it a shot. I think that was my, that would probably would be what I would say. Yeah, it's like the sign, right? It's like this resonance, like why this voice? Why this person, right? Like I totally believe in that too. There's like some pull 
that some part of you knows and the other part doesn't. So just trusting that and going with that, right? And that's right. what I appreciate about you, Doris, you know, following that, despite you being German and having this logical mind, right? It's like, you know, uh, looks for structure. Well, thank you so much for sharing your super inspirational story and yeah. your love with your partner here. And for ladies, if you are, if you want to be next, you know, you want to be my next success story, then I invite you to take my Magnetize Your Man quiz at Magnetize Your Man dot com where you get actually an individual individual individualized <laughs> strategy <laughs> say that three times fast um yeah. personalized just for you so again for that either click that link right below or go to magnetize your man.com duels thank you so much for being here i'm sure so many women can relate especially the ones that have a narcissistic background that have emotionally unavailable parents and partners in that past and you just really like kind of blew, blew some more light into them right like you just gave breathed some more life blue yeah. i'm just having all wrong with my words today you breathed some life into them as yes. a as yes. a medic that's kind of funny okay awesome awesome well thank you so much for being here and for the ladies i will talk to you next time take care okay. bye-bye bye-bye